Hey everybody, welcome back to Garage Gear. I'm JB and today we're talking about this Predator 4000 watt generator that I bought a while back, some modifications that I made to it, and an oil change. Let's get started. So one of the first modifications I made to this unit was putting some caster wheels down on the bottom. That allows me to literally spin this thing all around. I can get it in and out of my garage easily. And also with these caster wheels, it has two locking mechanisms on the front wheel. So all I gotta do is literally push down, push down, just like that, and this thing will not move. Another great thing, if I want to move it around, all I gotta do is open up my locks, and I am free to move this wherever I want. Now, these caster wheels, I will actually put a link in the description below so you can pick a setup for yourself. You will need four, one for each corner, and they are simply bolted down with four bolts. So I'll actually put a link for some bolts as well down below so you can make this process a little bit easier. Another thing that I did to kind of absorb some of the vibration here was I put a rubber piece, and this rubber piece I actually used from an impeller blade from a single stage snowblower. It kind of looks like this, quarter inch thick, about two and a half inches wide. That should do. I'll attach a link down below for that as well. And ladies and gentlemen, that really does help absorb some of the vibration through this unit as it's sitting in the driveway just running. So very handy, I can just kind of roll this thing exactly where I want it, just like that. And then when I'm ready to use it, I can take it out. And just like that, I don't have to lift this unit at all. I don't have to like push it hard to get it back in its spot. It just simply tucks and rolls right in out of the way. Another modification that I made to this was I installed an hour meter here. And this, ladies and gentlemen, cost about $7. And I strongly recommend getting one of these for a generator. Why? Because then you can kind of determine how long it's been running. Do you need to put more gas in it? How long are you, have you gone between oil changes? So a very helpful tool. I actually put this on about eight hours after I've used it. So if we look here, it's only got you know, less than one hour on it, but that was because I've only ran this for about eight hours and then I installed this. I will actually put a link down below for one of these hour meters. They're very handy, ladies and gentlemen, and for the cost of about $8, definitely worth having. To connect this, all you have to do is take the cord that's right under here, which I have kind of zip tied up high. You can see more of it right here. And I ran it to the spark plug wire and all you do is wrap it around that a couple of times, tie it up and you're done. So very, very simple addition to one of these already handy generators. This here is my junk cardboard, which I do all kinds of oil changes and painting on, and we're gonna move this right on top so we can change our oil. So what we're gonna to need to get this done, ladies and gentlemen, is a 10 millimeter socket set with an extension. We're gonna need an oil pan, which we'll put right underneath. We're going to need some paper towels, those are always handy. And then we're going to use our favorite friend, Form a Funnel. And I've talked about this product in a couple other videos, ladies and gentlemen. The cool thing about this is I can shape this in any way I want and I can put it in weird spots to help drain oil better and minimize the mess. So what I decided to do was slip it underneath the engine here because there is a little bit of room and it's going to drain down and away right into my oil catch pan. So let's loosen this thing up. We have our engine nice and warmed up here. Untwist our bolt and there we go. So we're going to let this drain for about 15, maybe 20 minutes or so, and then we'll come back and take a look at it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plug up our engine again. We're going to put our oil plug back in. We're going to take our ratchet and crank it back down. That'll do. 
Then we're going to slowly remove this out. And voila, once again, the form of funnel performs exactly the way we want it to. We got all the oil out. It drained right into our pan. And usually I just give this a quick wipe down, put it in my storage bin and it's ready for the next one. And this oil is starting to go bad. It's a little bit brown. It's not terrible, but it was definitely due for an oil change in terms of time. I am now going to recycle all of this old oil and I usually take this back to an auto zone or advanced auto parts when I get a bunch of it together. Give the pan a quick wipe down. And now we can tuck that aside for another day. And the oil we are using today to complete this oil change is Quaker State 5W30 Full Synthetic. Ladies and gentlemen, I always use Full Synthetic on all my small engines. I found that they just run better, start better. Everything seems to go better with Full Synthetic oil. So what we gotta do now is we gotta take out our oil dipstick and when we refill this machine back up, we gotta get it somewhere back to the middle of this serrated line. That's our goal. Now this is probably the most complicated part of the whole job because you're trying to get the oil down into a spot that is hard to get at. So, and if we kind of look here at this angle, this is a very awkward position for this funnel. And so it does make things a little complicated just getting the oil back in. Everything here so far has been pretty easy. This is probably the most complicated part of the whole job. All right, ladies and gents, so the instructions call for 0.6 liters of oil, and <gasps> what do you know? We actually have a measuring cup that measures in liters, so we're gonna fill this up to 0.5, pour it in, and then we're gonna fill it up again to 0.1 and fill that up again. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna fill this up to 0.5 liters and get this all ready to roll. Perfect. So now what we're gonna do in order to make putting this oil in as efficiently and as easily as possible, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull up on it. We're gonna tip it back just a little bit to give us an advantage. We already know how much oil we have to put in this thing. All we gotta do at this point is just kinda of tip it back. That'll give the funnel a little bit of a leading edge here. So now at this point, we're gonna refill back up to 0.1 liters. And that'll do. So here we are, our last 0.1 liters going in. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the oil settle for a few minutes. I've taken the weights out. So now this machine is laying completely flat. We're gonna let everything settle. Then we'll come back with the dipstick shortly and see if it measures up somewhere in the middle of these threads here. So now at this point in the game, I'm going to take out our funnel. If I shine a light in there, yep. It's a little hard to see, but the oil is coming right up the threads in there. So I'm going to take my dipstick. I'm going to screw it all the way in. I'm going to back it out. And what do you know, we're right just about three quarters of the way up those threads. So 0.6 liters is what you need in terms of oil, ladies and gentlemen, to get this job done. I'm gonna put my dipstick back in. Screw it back in. Wipe off any excess. And we are done. Okay, so there are plenty of things on this generator that I like. First off, the price point was somewhere around, I think I got it for like $275 when it was on sale. That's a pretty sweet deal considering this thing pumps out quite a bit of power. Some things that I will power on a typical power outage will be my refrigerator, my sump pump, then other non-essential things like the Wi-Fi or a salt lamp. Other things that were important to me when purchasing this were four outlets. This means I did not have to buy one of those extension wires that comes out and has maybe three outlets on one. A lot of other generators only have one outlet. This also has plenty of other hookups 
and other breakers. Also, it has a gas gauge up here. And if I shake it, you can kind of see that little red tab kind of bounce up and down. That is gonna tell me how much gas I have left. And I only prefer to keep very little gas in here until I actually use the machine. Why? Because having too much gas in there, even though it's ethanol free, can gum up the carburetor and bog it down and make starting it up very difficult. So I keep very little fuel in here, but as a precautionary measure, I run this machine once a month, just for about five minutes. That's all it needs, just to kind of keep the fuel going through the carburetor, keeping it fresh, keeping it clean, and then it's done. I just set it back in its, in its corner, I roll it back where it belongs, and it's done. This thing also has a huge metal gas tank up on top, and just take a look at this gas cap. This is, this is probably the most diesel gas cap I've ever seen. Look at this thing, it's huge. It's solid metal too. It's not cheap plastic, all right, and it locks on tight. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a big gas tank and that can run for several hours before it runs out. In the description below, I will actually attach a link for a comparable generator that cranks out similar power, has four outlets, and you could do all these modifications pretty much the exact same way. You could put your caster wheels on the bottom, your hour meter on the side, and set it up very similar to this. This is an awesome way to power your home in case if power ever goes out. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. Today you got to see a Harbor Freight Predator 4000 watt generator with some modifications. You got to see an oil change, pretty awesome little generator. You know what else is awesome? Getting one of these. Thank you for turning into Garage Gear. I'm JB. Stay tuned for future videos. Please like and subscribe. I give all subscribers an Air 5. Love you guys. And we'll see you in the garage. So now what we're going to do is we are going to plug up